Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's name, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us, and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. May God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in your providence, you called Joseph Sharashevsky from his home in Eastern Europe to the ministry of this church and sent him as a missionary to China, upholding him in his infirmity, that he might translate the Holy Scriptures into the languages of that land. Lead us, we pray, to commit our lives and talent to you in the confidence that when you give your servants any work to do, you also supply the strength to do it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The Lamb of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. For you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join in reciting the portion of Psalm 63 found on today's handout. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My 
soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate upon you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand holds me fast. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus went up about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw a crowd, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then his disciples Said to, uh, said to him, um, he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his fields. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Samuel Isaac Joseph Sierraszewski, perhaps one of the hardest names of saints to pronounce. When I was in seminary, we would do a procession on uh, Halloween, on the eve of all saints, around the block of the seminary with everybody in Evanston, Illinois, driving by looking and going, what are those weird people doing? And of course, being seminarians, we always made sure to put Sharashevsky in the litany that we sang, and always his whole name. Samuel Isaac Joseph Sharashevsky, pray for us. Sharashevsky's story, though, is more interesting than his name. This sense of call to be a shepherd is fascinatingly visible in his life story. He feels a call to be a shepherd by becoming a rabbi, having grown up in a Jewish Lithuanian, called to Germany to study, becoming fascinated by Christianity, called to America to study for the Presbyterian ministry. Following that sense of call, and his exploration and fascination with what God is doing in the world, he feels a call to the Episcopal Church and ends up coming to America and finishing his theological studies at General Seminary in New York. Then he hears this call from Bishop Boone to go help in China. So this Lithuanian Jew who's become a Christian goes to China, <laughs> right? Which is amazing and wonderful um, because God is interested not as much in nations and divisions of nations as God is interested in shepherds for the people. And he goes to China and serves there and discovers um, that his lifelong fascination and ability with languages can help him to translate the prayer book and the Bible, which he does, and 
He translates the Bible and parts of the prayer book into Mandarin. He gets interested in um, translating into Wenli, which is another common Chinese language. Um, he gets called to be the bishop, the bishop of Shanghai. Fascinating, this sense of call to be a shepherd. And what is interesting about a call is sometimes the call pierces right through whatever is going on in your life. Right? So the call pierces right through his journey and it actually is part of his journey from Judaism to Christianity and part of his journey into the Episcopal Church. And the call pierces right through his paralysis. Even paralyzed, he is still a shepherd to the people, finishing his translation work so they can read the scriptures in their own language. And the picture on today's handout is of him after his paralysis in his office in Tokyo with a Chinese and a Japanese secretary to help him as he continues to work on that translation. And when he would type, he could only type with one finger. And yes, it was that finger, which is ironic and funny. But there's that sense of call and what I find fascinating about it is it, it is very much a call that is not about who Cherishevsky is as much as it is a call to be a shepherd, to care for God's people. And we often think about, is God calling me and what is God calling me to? But we don't always think about for whom is God calling me? And that's something that the story of Cherishevsky brings to life for us. He is called to be a shepherd, yes, in part for him, but more for the people whom he would shepherd. In the story of Samuel and Eli, Eli's life has been a mess, and his sons have been out of control. And uh, in this little snippet of the story, um, Eli figures out in his blind old age that it's the Lord who's calling Samuel, and he tells him how to respond, and he does. And if you were to go to first the book of 1 Samuel and continue reading in the story, the next thing you would find is that God gives Samuel, a really harsh message for Eli. And the message is harsh because it's all about the effect of Eli and his sons on the people. So even this call is about the people. Yes, it's about Samuel, but it's also about the people. Not only is God calling me, but for whom is God calling me? To do what? I believe that every one of us, when God calls us into a, a particular prayer life or a particular ministry or a particular act of service or whatever, it is both for us, a call to us, but it's also a call for something or someone beyond us. And it helps us to pause and remember that. The Gospel text from Matthew is particularly fascinating in this regard. It says that Jesus had compassion for them, uh, the people, um, when he saw them coming, seeking the good news and cures from disease and sickness. And it says he has compassion for them. And the word compassion in Greek 
like the word compassion in Hebrew, is a stirring of the guts. His guts were moved for the people. This sense of this deep physical and emotional response. And he, he says, um, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So pray for God to send laborers out. And it's not about, he doesn't say, these people are so bad and wrong, they need someone to come and tell them to get right with God. A mistake a lot of Christians make. I was called to tell people to get right with God. No, you weren't. You were called to love them and to tell them that God loves them. Sometimes that might include saying, hey, is what you're doing working? You might think about that. But it's not about, this call is about his compassion for the people. His love for the people. It is a call for the people. He asks us to pray not to be called, but for people to be called for the harvest. It's that quality of call for that accompanies that discernment about call to. We often talk, as I've said, about what God might be calling each of us too. The story of Joseph, Samuel Isaac, Joseph Sherashevsky, the story of Samuel, the story that we hear Jesus of Jesus and his compassion for the people asks us also to think about who we are being called for. Because God calls to us for others. Please join us in the prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray also for our own needs and for those of others. Lord God Almighty, for no merit on our part, you have brought us out of death into life, out of sorrow into joy. Put no end to your gifts. Fulfill your marvelous acts in us, and grant to us who have been justified by faith the strength to persevere in that faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, holy, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word. Through Christ, you created the universe and formed us all in your own image. You sent him to be our Savior, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross, he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering, and death. On the first day of the week, you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through Christ, you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own children. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O God, accept our sacrifice of praise and Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Holy One, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your word, we offer you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all of us who share this bread and cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us with all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Bring us with Joseph and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now the Savior Christ has taught us. We are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take your remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
firecrackers for red hat. Oh man. The water crack is the top of the foundation. Oh yeah. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth the people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work according to his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us forever. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.